Hi, I'm Barbara. I am the co-CEO of 100% Renewables. In this video, I would like to explain the basics of the electricity supply chain and building or buying renewable energy. Now, let me tell you a little bit about 100% Renewables first. 100% Renewables helps organizations to plan for and move to a clean energy future through energy efficiency, on-site renewable energy, with, which may include battery storage, off-site renewable energy build or buy solutions, and carbon offsetting. Our focus is on practical and cost-effective solutions that organizations can schedule, resource, and implement through short, medium, and long-term plans. Now this video came about because one of our clients recently went to market via an expression of interest to solicit interest from firms and potential partners with building or sourcing large volume renewable energy to meet a significant fraction of their electricity demand. We were contracted to review the responses to the organization's EOI and provide our recommendations about sourcing large volume renewables. The requested interest was for two technical options, to build a solar farm on our client's own land or to purchase renewable electricity from other projects, for example, from utility scale wind and solar projects elsewhere in the national electricity market. Energy markets and evaluating EUI responses is complex, so for our final presentation, we were asked to also cover some of the basics to allow the leadership team to understand how we arrived at our recommendations. So firstly, I'd like to talk about the electricity supply chain, then about your electricity bill and how this is made up, about solar behind the meter installations, building your own solar farm, and finally, about corporate power purchase agreements. I wanted to show you a quick overview of the electricity market to provide context for how an offer for the supply of renewable energy should be assessed, whether this comes from a project built on your own land or from someone else's renewable energy project. Any electricity bill is made up of several parts, including generation energy, distribution costs to transport electricity to your sites, network, and other charges such as environmental levies, market operator fees, metering charges, and access or supply charges. These charges are all bundled together to make up your bill. For large sites, you can see the full breakdown of charges, as in, for instance, the energy component, the network component, and the other component, which together make up your electricity bill. But for small sites, all these costs tend to be bundled together into a single rate. Now, not all solar panels um, are created equal. Say this rectangle reflects your electricity bill. As per the electricity supply chain I explained earlier, your bill is made up of energy generation, environmental fees, network charges, the retail margin and other charges. If you put solar panels on your own building and use the electricity that is generated, electricity does not have to be generated or uh, distributed to your business. The grid and the market operator never sees this electricity and you save on all the costs components of your bill. You will continue to pay fixed charges like meter charges, so the yellow box does not cover all the cost of your electricity bill in its entirety. However, every kilowatt hour that your solar panels produce does not have to be paid for in your bill. If you build your own solar farm for the purpose of meeting your own site's energy demand, you send the electricity into the grid and it becomes electricity that has to be moved through the network to get to your premises. So the network operators and the market operator levy tariffs and charges accordingly, and hence your savings are for generation, as you don't buy that power from a large generator, but from your own generator, and some of the environmental charges that are applied. So inherently, 
The business case is weaker than just putting panels on your roofs to supply your sites. However, you can potentially achieve scale that you can't on your building's roofs. And if you can't build and operate a solar farm at less than the cost to buy power from the grid, then there may be a business case to go this way. A key point in this is that you cannot simply send electricity into the grid and then claim it as your own against your electricity use. A licensed retailer needs to be part of the process who can work with you and help you buy the power from your plant and may source the balance of power you require from the grid so that you always have security of supply. An offsite power purchase agreement or PPA works in much the same way, except you don't build your own renewable energy generation plant. Rather, you look to enter into a term agreement, typically 10 years, to buy your power from renewables located somewhere on the grid. This might be a mix of solar, wind, and in future pumped hydro and battery storage. It may be for just a portion of your energy demand, or it may be for most or all of it. As with building your own solar farm, the business case is weaker than just putting panels on your roofs to supply your sites. The key difference is obviously that you don't have to build and maintain or operate your own solar farm. And as you're likely buying from generators that are very large, there may be an economy of scale reflected in pricing. Ultimately, as with your own solar farm, the key measure of the value of an offer is whether you can source renewables at or lower than the cost of grid power over the term of the agreement. We hope you have enjoyed this introduction into the electricity market and the difference between building and buying renewable energy. Please hit us up with your comments or further questions. Thank you.